Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's college basketball, NBA, and NHL games and look ahead to tonight's slate of games. I'm going to talk about American Idol from Sunday night because we didn't get a chance to get to it on yesterday's show. We'll talk about the memorial for Kobe Bryant and my... Best bets of the day. Well, Kobe and Gianna Bryant. I can't remiss of leaving out a Gianna, so I got to include her in that. All right. Um, college basketball. Look back on last night's games. It's a small slate. And then we'll look ahead to tonight's slate as well. Number six, Florida State over number 11, Louisville, 82 67. Texas over number 20, West Virginia, 67 57. Gardner Webb over Hampton, 81 67. It was a resumed game from January 20th. Morgan State over Delaware State, 90 80. NCAT over Maryland Eastern, 83 62. NC Central over Howard, 80 65. Florida AM over SC State, 82 62 56. Illinois over Nebraska, 71 59. Bethune Cookman over Norfolk State, 78 55. Alcorn State over Alabama State, 80 77. Prairie View over Mississippi Valley State, 88 69. Arkansas Pine Bluff over Texas Southern, 74-72 in overtime. Southern over Alabama A&M, 64-37. And number one, Kansas over Oklahoma State, 83-58. Tonight, a much bigger slate. Um, 7 o'clock, number four, Dayton at George Mason. Dayton is a 12-point favorite. I have Dayton by 12.5, so I'm going to lay the 12 with the flatters on the road. I don't feel super about it because it's a half-point difference. I'm going to do it anyway. ACC Network, number 7, Duke at Wake Forest. Duke's favored by 10.5. I have Duke by 13. So I'm going to lay the 10.5 with Duke. ESPN, number 8, Kentucky at Texas A&M. Kentucky's a 6.5 point favorite. I have Kentucky by 5. So I'm going to bet on the underdog here and take the Aggies. I think this could be a trap spot for Can- or Kansas. Kentucky. Um, Kentucky's been playing real well. They're a dark horse for a one seed, in my opinion, with how well they're playing. So, um, give me A and M plus the the uh, six and a half. I don't know if they'll win the game outright, but it'll be competitive. Ole Miss at number fifteen, Auburn. Auburn's a nine point favorite. I have Auburn by fourteen, so laying the nine. ESPN two, number eighteen, Iowa. Number twenty four, Michigan State. Michigan State's a seven and a half point favorite. I have Michigan State by two and a half, so give me Iowa and the points. So that's a five point. Difference there and between the previous game with Auburn and Ole Miss. CBS Sports Network, DePaul at Xavier. Xavier's an eight-point favorite. I have Xavier by eight and a half. So I'm going to lay to eight with Xavier. I don't feel super about it because the half-point difference. LaSalle at Davidson. Davidson's favored by 11 and a half. I have Davidson by eight. So give me LaSalle and the 11 and a half. Akron at Bowling Green. Northern Illinois at Eastern Michigan, Miami of Ohio at Kent State, Toledo at Central Michigan, Western Michigan at Ball State, Buffalo at Ohio, ESPNU, TCU at Iowa State. Iowa State's a three-point favorite at home. I would make this TCU by one and a half. So give me the road team getting the three points. I think they win the game outright. 8 o'clock ESPN plus Kansas State number two Baylor. Baylor is a 14-point favorite. I'd make this Baylor by a whopping 22. So give me Baylor minus the 14. Drake at Loyola Chicago. I have Loyola on my sheet. Favorite by 5.5. ESPN has it at 7.5, so a two-point difference. So give me Drake plus the 7.5. Missouri Valparaiso. Um... I make Valpo 3.5, and and it's Valpo 2.5, so give me Valpo minus the points. ESPN 2, number 22, Texas Tech at Oklahoma. I have Texas Tech on my sheet, favored by 1. They're 2.5 point favorites, so give me Oklahoma plus the points. Nevada at Wyoming. Um, Nevada's an 8 point favorite. I have Nevada favored by 11.5, so give me Nevada minus the 8. NC State at North Carolina, I have. NC State by six, and it's UNC by two and a half. Ooh. I love NC State getting the two and a half. 
Carolina has been finding new ways to lose games all season long. Like, Cole Anthony, like, I, he's good and all, but he's not had a good season. My goodness. So, NC State two and a half. And I have this as a, let's see, one pick pick. One and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. An eight and a half point difference, which is nuts. Like, nuts. Clemson at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's a two and a half point favorite at Georgia Tech by one. So give me Clemson plus the points. CBS Sports Network, Memphis at SMU. I've SMU by two and a half. SMU's a four point favorite. So give me Memphis getting the four. Tulane at Tulsa, ESPNU. Tulsa's an 11 point favorite. I have Tulsa by 13, so. I'm laying the points with Tulsa. Bama at Mississippi State on the SEC Network. Mississippi State's favorite by three and a half. I have it by five, so give me the Bulldogs minus the three in the hook. 11 o'clock, CBS Sports Network, Colorado State at number five, San Diego State. San Diego State is favorite by 13 and a half. I have it 12 and a half, so give me Colorado State plus the 13 and a half because I have a one point difference. ESPN 2, San Jose State at Utah State. Utah State's favorite by 22. I have it 18 and a half. So, a three and a half point difference here. So, give me the San Jose State Spartans plus the 22. Although, I don't feel strong about it. NBA, I'm going to go over last night's slate and look ahead to the board tonight. Um, busy last night. Sixers over the Hawks, 129-112. Bucks over the Wizards, 134 134- 137, 134 in overtime. Cavs over to Heat, 125, 119 in overtime. Magic over the Nets, 115, 113. Rockets over to Knicks, 123, 112. Mavs over to Wolves, 139, 123. Suns over to Jazz, 131, 111. Clippers over to Grizzlies, 124 to 97. Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Corners at the Pacers, 730 TNT. Bucks at the Raptors. Monkey's a one point favorite. I'm walking by one and a half. I was hoping that this number would be higher than one and a half. If this line goes up, I'm taking Toronto. Like, it's the loss of... If Brooke Lopez is out, then I would make it the same number. Which I believe he is out. So I'd make this the same number, Walkie by one. I had one and a half written down, but... According to um, my spreadsheets and whatnot, the players worked on the spread... Brooke Lopez is worth a half point, and he's out. So, Milwaukee by one is what I'd make it. Um, so, at gunpoint, the Raptors is my take there. And I think the Raptors win, although my number is even. Thunder at the Bulls. Um, Celtics at the Trailblazers. 10 o'clock TNT, Pelicans at the Lakers. Lakers are an 8-point favorite. I make this 13.5, so give me the Lakers minus the 13.5. If there's injuries, this line will obviously uh, move for me. Kings at the Warriors at 10.30. Um, in terms of the rest of the games, Pacers are giving 10.5. It's 11.5. I'm even with the market on the raptors Bucks game. Thunder at the Bulls, OKC's given six and a half. I have it seven. Pistons at the Nuggets, I have Denver um, giving 16 and a half. In my sheet, they're given 12. So that's a four and a half discrepancy. Celtics at the Blazers, I have Boston giving 11. That's because of the Lillard injury. If Lillard was there, it'd be Boston six. I'd have it, but no Lillard, so it's 11. Lakers, I have 13 and a half, and it's eight to so five and a half discrepancy. And then Kings at the Warriors, Sacramento's giving six. I have it five and a half. NHL, we'll look back on last night's slate and look ahead to tonight's slate. Um, only one game Blue Jackets over Siders, four to three in overtime on a goal by Emil Bemstrom. So a big two points for the Blue Jackets. They separate themselves from the Rangers and go up six points. 
So the team now that's out of the wild card is Carolina, um, who has 74 points, who made, obviously, the big trade for Vincent Trocek and short up their defense. So they're two points back at Columbus now. So Columbus ends their losing streak against the bad Senators team. I was going to bet the draw in regulation. I thought about it because of all the injuries, and Ottawa's been a little competitive lately, but they didn't have the ball to do it. All right, tonight's late, big game from Long Island. Rangers at the Islanders. Flames at the Bruins. Canadians host the Canucks. Maple Leafs at the Lightning. Sharks at the Flyers. Jets at the Capitals. Stars at the Hurricanes. Devils at the Red Wings at 7.30. 8 o'clock NBCSN. The Blackhawks at the Blues. This game, I think, is... Pierre Maguire and play-by-play probably either John Forslund, maybe Kenny Albert, maybe um, Chris Cuthbert. We'll see. Um, I like the Blues here at home. Uh, Carolina or Colorado's up their butt for the division. So I think they'll come out and win this game on home ice against the Blackhawk team that just trade away. It's goaltender and a good defenseman. Sanders at the Predators. Blue Jackets at the Wild. 9 o'clock Panthers at the Coyotes. 10 o'clock the Oilers at the Ducks. Now I want to talk about the memorial that was held at the Staples Center yesterday for the late Kobe and Gianna Bryant. It was beautiful. You saw performances by Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, and Alicia Keys. Christina Aguilera sang Ave Maria. Alicia Keys played piano of one of uh, Kobe and Gianna's favorite songs to listen to. Um, It was uh, Moonlight Sonata that she performed. Um, Beyonce sang Halo, her hit song from 2008-2009, whenever that came out. And then Christina Aguilar, like I said, sang Hallelujah, or I'm sorry, Ave Maria. Um, Vanessa Bryant spoke. I think she did a great job, and she held it together for the most part. She's a very strong woman. She said some beautiful things about Gianna and Kobe and about their lives and what they want to do in their futures and how they didn't get to do life things in their future. Like Kobe couldn't walk his girls down the aisle. Gianna couldn't get married or have children of her own. Vanessa believes that Gianna would have been a beautiful and a very good mother. And as do I because... She was a great person. Vanessa believed that Gianna would have been the best player in the WNBA. Wouldn't put it past Gianna. She was very athletic and was an awesome basketball player. As she was playing travel with a very good team that Kobe coached. And um, it's just a shame that these two people's lives are taken from us so, so soon. Um, Gino Ariyama spoke. Diana Taurasi spoke. Um, Sabrina Ionescu spoke. Michael Jordan spoke. Shaquille O'Neal spoke. And even F-bombed in his um, speech, which was uh, great. Got the audience laughing. The best thing Michael Jordan said was that um, as he was crying, he said, um, now I'm going to be living with another crying meme, and that got the audience laughing. So there's a lot of laughs, a lot of tears. Um, among notable people at the um, memorial, another person that spoke, by the way, was Rob Polinka, the Lakers general manager and president of basketball operations. He's best friends with Kobe, so it makes sense that he spoke. Phil Jackson was in attendance. Um... Jerry Sloan was in attendance, Greg Popovich, Tony Parker, LeBron James, 
Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Stephen Curry, Alex Rodriguez, and Jennifer Lopez were in attendance. Um, among other of notes, um, I believe Kevin Hart was in attendance. I thought I saw Kevin Hart in the audience. Um, Spike Lee. Um, hmm. There's a lot of big, big names there, too. Um, I believe I saw Popovich crying. They showed a shot of, which was um, unbelievable. I believe Chris Paul was there. Um, James Harden, Russell Westbrook. Um, and Westbrook didn't play in that Knicks game last night. And Harden, obviously, was the best player on the court. Um... But yeah, a lot of NBA stars and former stars, coaches, WNBA players, college players. It was great. And um, the speeches obviously were phenomenal, as I mentioned. So good job on Vanessa and um, the Los Angeles Lakers and the Staples Center for having this um, awesome but sad event celebrating the lives of Kobe and Gianna Bryant. Before we do Best Bet, I want to talk about American Idol from Sunday night. I couldn't get to it on the show yesterday, but it was pretty good. Um, Some very good auditions. Stood out to me was a couple, Um, Margie and Johnny, their names were. Margie, 26 years old, music teacher. Johnny, I didn't get his age. But my big takeaway was that Johnny's audition was better than Margie. And I think Johnny will go further on the show. And Katy Perry is absolutely right. And Johnny's from California and Margie's from uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Um, Margie obviously auditioned last year and made it through. But she was eliminated before the, um, I believe it's the top 24. Um Another great singer, in my opinion, was uh, a girl named Sarah Eason, 20 years old, from Berkeley, California. She performed The Fire of Boy. She was raised by two moms and had 26 siblings, which is crazy because uh, she connected with her, um, her biological father and um, discovered all these siblings she had. And all of them were there. The father was there. The two moms were there. The judges kept asking her questions, which um, if you have a story like that, you're going to get a lot of questions. And I'm sure she didn't mind all those questions. And she was a great singer, and I hope she goes far in the show because she has a great story. And most importantly, she looks like she belongs on the show. There's a young girl named Claire Julie, 16 years old from Illinois, who had a Broadway voice. But obviously it didn't go through because they felt that she was more suited for Broadway. To me, she felt like somebody that would fit very well in Hairspray rather than American Idol. There was um, a girl named Kay Jenis, 19 years old, from High Point, North Carolina, who sang, um, I'm begging you for mercy. Um, the judges want to give her a second chance. Two of them, um, the judges didn't feel strongly about her. So they take her to downtown for a second chance with a group of people. And then they all, um, the people agreed that she deserved a second chance. So they sent her to Hollywood. Um, and then there's a boy named Kyle that's saying uh, Mercy by Shawn Mendes, who was an Eagles male che- cheerleader, who was a good singer and made it through to Hollywood. Um, there was a girl named Julia, 21 years old, who, um, who made it through. Katy Perry ran up and gave her a hug after her performance because she was so good. Um, And there was another couple, Kurt and Hannah from Texas. Kurt did not make it, but Hannah did. So um, Hannah was obviously very talented. I'm interested to see how far she goes. And obviously um, next Sunday's show, I believe, will be more auditions. All right, best bet of the day brought to you 
by FanDuel. Um, college basketball. Um, I gave it away because I can't believe how overvalued North Carolina is right now. NC State is going to win this game pretty easily, at least by five points. I think that um, there's a chance that NC State could be favored by the time of tip-off because the number is heading in their direction. I got it at minus 115 with the plus two and a half. So there's one. And then my NBA best bet, I'm going to go with the Boston Celtics. I think that Jason Tatum will continue to show people why he is a superstar in this league, the best player on the Celtics. Oh, Kemba Walker's out too. And I think he's worth three and a half or three to the spread. So I make that Celtics by eight. So um, now I'm going to stay away from that because I have a two-point discrepancy. I forgot about the injury to Kemba Walker. But if Kemba Walker plays, this line's going up, and I probably would bet the Celtics. So instead, I'm going to go with the Lakers minus the eight against the Pelicans. I think the number is solely Zion. And um, I love the bet on the Pelicans when I get the chance. But um, the Lakers are a better team. I know there's going to be the narrative of um, the Kobe thing. I thought that last night for the Clippers, and I got slapped in the ass as um, the Grizzlies had no shot in that game from the get-go. So um, give me the Lakers minus the eight against Zion and the Pels. It'll be a competitive game. I'm going to say the Lakers win by 10 points. But if Anthony Davis doesn't play, I'd obviously make this line 10 around that. So um, that's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow um, afternoon. I'm going to be recording um, College Press, NBA, NHL. I'm going to do my NHL redraft from 2019. Um, Maybe I'll also do my first um, bracket reveal of this nice stretch. I'm going to be doing bracket reveals. I haven't done a bracket thing since the opening day. So, so much has changed from now and then and teams and whatnot. And then I want to do an NFL mock draft at some point. We'll do that probably on Thursday because we'll probably be at that point eight weeks until the draft, maybe even seven. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.